John is a man of focus, commitment, sheer will. Something you know very little about. He once was an associate to ours. We call him Baba Yaga. I think John Wick has to be one of the absolute best unexpected action movies of all time. It is probably one of my favorite and it is easily rewatchable. It's only alongside something like Taken, the original Taken, in terms of something that I thought was going to be really shit and turned out to be absolutely awesome. So what better way to commemorate the existence of such a fine film than to make one of my favorite scenes from the film itself. So this will be my, they call him Baba Yaga diorama. I wanted to make sure that everything was decently proportional to the size of the character. So I started with my John Wick first. I ran out of my thicker two millimeter wire. So I ended up using little bits of the thinner floral wire. And then using the drill, I spun them together to make a thicker cord. It ended up being really useful for the Super Sculpey because I didn't need to lay down a base layer of green stuff. Though I kind of wish I had anyways, just because this ended up still being pretty flimsy. So it moves a lot, lot while I'm working with it, which is fine enough for the uncured Super Sculpey. But once it's cured, it tends to crack along any of the slightly weaker connections. So anywhere that I've started adding in parts, I really had to be careful with it. I wanted to try something new for making the face, so I got a fairly small ball of Super Sculpey and then attached it just to a plastic lid. And then dug out a head sized hole and then I'm going to put some green stuff straight into that. This will hopefully hold it in place so that I can work on a little bit more detail without worrying about squishing the head itself because the Super Sculpey should have a little bit of give to it. And it actually worked out really well. I could see myself doing this in the future. So I was pretty happy with how the face turned out, but once I started to give him his sort of characteristic sunken cheeks, I realized that uh, this is less Keanu Reeves and more Grand Moff Tarkin, which is kind of a fun accident. Uh, but you know, once we get everything on, throw some hair on him and paint on a beard, it shouldn't really matter. Everything else is going to be made out of green stuff as well. So a couple of little hands, which I made ahead of time and then attached them to the body. And then the rest of the skin as well. Attaching the face, just put a little bit on the back of it and some strands of hair. And you've got yourself a somewhat John Wick looking character. Almost the entire rest of this diorama is going to be made out of chipboard. This is the first time I've ever used this stuff and it is absolutely awesome um, it's like super high compressed cardboard and it's easy to cut and easy to shape and it's thick enough that you can use it for just about anything you can double it up quite easy it sticks together really nicely and i think you're going to see a lot more of my projects in the future just using this stuff so once i've got a sort of an idea of the layout i can start making each of the pieces same thing it's going to be using this chipboard so I'm going to make a couple of these bookshelves at the back. Uh, this is the first time I've actually really laid things out, but I wanted everything to be fairly decently sized. So you saw a little earlier that I use the uh, John Wick model to sort of measure the height of things. I'm just eyeballing it based on sort of his size and height compared to the scene in the movie. And then I'm gonna actually measure it so I make sure that everything is fairly proportional to him. I'm just using super glue here. I've actually got uh, like a, a broken bottle of super glue that I use a stir stick to apply to the edges and then hold it down long enough for it to harden. And then it's just a case of pressing each of the shelves into place. Because the chipboard's got a bit of give to it, it's pretty easy to squeeze things in and shave off anything where you need to make a bit more space. Once I've got my first bookcase built, all I need to do is recreate that process twice more to get my three shelves in the back, and then it's on to making the rest of the pieces. 
the desk was the one that was probably the most obnoxious just because of the way it was designed. It's got like the little thing on the side and then I use some stir sticks to sort of bulk out the edge and give it a bit more of a, a thick sizing to it. Now it is worth noting that once I built this, I realized it was way too big for the actual diorama for the model itself. So I ended up cutting it almost in half. I cut the back off and I cut the sides off and shrunk it down a fairly significant amount. Once I've got all my pieces finished, I'm on to sort of giving everything a final once over. So what I wanna do is sand any of the sharp edges just using some fairly heavy grit sandpaper. What this will do is even any of the pieces that I have cut a little wonky, they'll sort of flatten themselves out, get rid of any obvious gouges. And then using my wood filler, I'm just gonna start sealing all the edges. You can go pretty ham with this stuff. You don't need to worry about overdoing it since we're gonna come back through with some more sandpaper and a couple files just to sharpen everything up. It dries really nicely and gives it a good effect. It also lets me round the edges a bit uh, without worrying about breaking anything out. For all the little extra pieces, I've just got some of this thick, I mean, it's basically the same as what I've used, only it's really thin. So it's like high density cardboard, which just came from some Amazon packaging. And that stuff cuts down really well to make little drawers, little shelves, uh, handles, that sort of thing. A couple dabs of PVA glue will hold all that in place. And then I can go back through and add those tiny little handles onto it as well. And then that'll really sell each of these things as individual drawers and just tiny furniture pieces. I really had to remind myself that I'm not just making a tiny dollhouse. This is going to be a sweet diorama versus something that a little kid is going to play with. A thick coat of Mod Podge covering everything acts as both a primer so that once it comes to painting it doesn't soak in as much and it will also act as like a final sealer to hold everything in place. I took a screenshot of the scene where he sort of opens up his chest and he's got his gold and his guns in it and then using Photoshop I just reshaped it so it was a straight on photo, printed it out and then attached it to some chipboard and then using some more stir sticks cut into thin strips, I added sort of a border around it. Now I just need to cut out a section of the floor so that it can be recessed. So using the top of the chest I made, I can cut out a square and then using that cutout, I can actually determine how far down I want it to go. So I've attached a couple sides onto it and then this will get glued onto the underside and then once I flip it over you'll really only see the recess. So that's where he will have dug out his chest and then to lift that off the floor I'm going to just cut some strips of foam, use a little hot glue to attach those on. I ended up having to double it up because I actually made it a little deeper than I meant to but that's fine. So I'll double up the XPS foam, and then once I'm happy with the placement of that, I can glue it onto another piece of chipboard. And then at the end, what I'll do is add a frame around the edge to hide all that unsightly purple XPS. Then the last step for the base will be to add another thick coat of black Mod Podge, which again acts as a primer and it also acts as a nice underlay before I coat the entire thing in a thick coat of concrete gray. Then it's on to painting all the other parts. So the shelf, the desk and the file cabinet, I wanted to have that you know that awful green that all the old school sort of metal things used to be made out of? I don't know, I don't know what it was. It was really, really hideous, but it's ingrained in my brain as like being the color that all the school desks were made out of. So I mixed some like, I think it was goblin green, some uh, white and a little bit of brown to give me sort of a truly awful color, which turned out really well once it dried. 
The chest and the chest of drawers took a couple coats just because the brown I have has such low pigment um, that it took a lot of coats to actually get it to show up. But once it came back through with a lighter brown as a dry brush, it looked really sharp by the end of it. I'm gonna go over all of the horrible goblin metal green with a dry brush using, I think it's bone white which really highlights the edges and gives it sort of a worn, sitting in a basement for years look. Then the final step for these will be to paint on a couple highlights. So all the handles are gonna get like a silver coloring on them. I'll go over everything with a black wash just to give it a bit of a highlight and all the shadows. And then I wanna make sure that I paint the bookshelves a nice dark black to cover any of the thinner areas where the Mod Podge is not covering it in its entire. Then the last thing I needed to make were all the books to go on the bookshelves. This took ages. Like I try to work within a week's time frame to get all these things done so that I can have a new video every week and trying to make these books so that they looked halfway decent took forever. Fortunately, what I found worked best was gluing each of the books together into like little sets. And then once I had all the sets lined up, I think I had, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 of these little things. They were all slightly different. I was able to go through and paint them various colors. I wanted to paint each of the spines a different color just to make sure that it really stood out. And this took a significant amount of time as well. But it actually made all the difference as far as not making everything the same uniform brown. Yeah, it took a little bit of time, but once it was finished, I think it adds a whole lot to the bookshelf itself. It doesn't draw any attention away from the actual scene, but it also just makes everything come alive a little bit more. I also made a couple little boxes just to go along the bottom. They're just a couple square pieces of the chipboard with a little strip cut along the top. I left them the same color because it's basically a cardboard box color anyways. And then once I glue each of those bookcases or book sets into the case itself, it was really starting to look sharp. Then once I glued all the pieces into place, it was just a case of getting that rug. So what I did is I printed out a copy of like a Persian rug on just a piece of paper, glued it back to back so that it covers both sides and then folded it up and glued it onto the floor. And it turned out pretty well, all things considered. To make the rubble strewn about, I've just baked a couple pieces of unusable Super Sculpey Firm and then threw it in my coffee grinder. Once it was blended up nicely and the chunks were significantly smaller, I used little Mod Podge, well, a lot of Mod Podge as you can see, to lay down a nice foundation of dust and rubble and debris. Once I'd got sort of the thicker, bigger chunks laid down, I came back through and just sprinkled that dust everywhere. The floor was a bit too clean, and I didn't know what else to put. I didn't feel like making a whole bunch of little things to throw in there. Uh, if I had a bit more time, I probably would have, but just sprinkling that dust everywhere seemed to work well. And then some thinned out Mod Podge as a sealer, coat the entire, and leave it to dry for 24 hours or so. And then it's time to paint Baba Yaga himself. So blue for his blue jeans, go figure. Uh, white for his white t-shirt, as you would imagine. Skin tone for his skin. And then black for his hair. I think there was like four colors I used on this entire thing. The biggest difference will be once we get to the black. So once I've got his face painted and looking a little bit more humanoid, I'm gonna color his hair black, which really starts to stand out. And then the same black I'm gonna to use to give him his signature mustache, beard, everything, which finally takes him from Grand Moff Tarkin to uh, Grand Moff John Wick. And then the final step are the little blood stains from where Theon Greyjoy beat him up and started this whole wonderful story a happening. Once he's done and dry, 
pop them into place and we're gonna call it a day. I think that's finished. So on to the glamour shots. Nope, sorry, I forgot his tiny little hammer. So there you go. Thanks again for taking the time to click on the video. If you liked what you saw, please leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, uh, like the video itself, and check out some of the other stuff I've done. My plan, as always, is to release at least one of these a week as much as possible. Um, I might slow down a tiny bit just to make sure that they stay sort of consistent in the quality. Uh, I find that if I'm trying to squeeze out too many every week, they start to go downhill a little bit. So I would rather do a few fewer and have them look great than too many. Uh, otherwise, you can subscribe to keep an eye on things and you'll know as soon as a new one gets dropped. So until then, we'll see you later. Cheers.